And now, top news. Once again, top super cops Lombada and Bucks have foiled another evil drug operation while simultaneously freeing 32 refugees sold into sexual slavery. When asked about the case, Lieutenant Lombada had this to say. What I think my partner is trying to say is, he's a major dipshit and I'm the best. This is the 16th time in just one month that Lombada and Bucks have responded to a news channel in this exact manner and verbiage. In related news, are Lombada and Bucks sleeping with each other's neighbors? Susie Pugface has the answer when we return. These super cops have taken a major chunk out of our business again. What do you say we do, boys? I say we grease them. Yeah, let's turn him into blood pudding. What? It's delicious. I say we break in, trash the place, then call it industrial espionage. Jack, you are my number one guy. But you're not in this movie, so beat it. We need to put these two so-called super cops away for good. And I've got a perfect way to do it. And now the top news. Lombada and Bucks, guilty. The pair were sentenced to 20 years in the Supermax prison, Death Island, for the murder of TV's Tony Danza. While a nation mourns for the loss of the singer slash actor slash boxer slash dancer, the once glorified super cops, let me say that again, super cops, now face a hell that they helped build. You can say that again, but please don't try. I know it hurts. This place is the stuff of nightmares. What sick bastard would build a prison in Des Moines? We're surrounded by guys we put in here. Oh shit, here comes one now. Hey man, not cool bro. I was just selling a little bud to put me through college and you assholes shot me and then got me put in prison. Thanks a lot, soup cops, man. Yeah, yeah me too. Uh, oh, I hate those guys. Yeah. Wait, you guys are all in here for pot? But it's legal now. It is? Oh, well, then why are we still here? Let's just go, man. Hold it right there, mister. Hey, these guys say we can leave, man. Oh, man. You shot me in the heart. And the balls. Not cool, bro. And now the top news. In his last act before all hell breaks loose, President Obama signed a pardon for super cops Lambada and Bucks. The pair were released back into custody of the year 2016, where they were promptly killed in a horrible grease fire while apparently attempting to cook blood pudding. In other news, 95% of Americans believe that babies are born out of ladies' buttholes. Are they correct? We'll find out when our own Susie Pugface fact-checks with President-elect Trump. Now, Stinker Madness. Stinker Madness. Hello and welcome to Stinker Madness, the podcast about bad movies for bad movie lovers by bad movie lovers. I'm your host, Justin. With me again are Sam and Jackie for our 255th episode, I believe. The deuce and the double nickel? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. The two- okay. Jesus Christ. Right, that's some good, <laughs> some fine mental processing you got going on there. Shit. It's really cold and it's- it makes my brain like not work very well. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't even. I, I, I couldn't do math until about 2.30 this afternoon. It's too cold to do math. It is. Jackie, how are you doing? Uh, cold. That sounds not good. It's too cold for me to think. It's too cold to poop. Best country western song ever written. <laughs> kind of by two drunks in the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, written by Sam. 
Let's get into the streaming do's and don'ts. What do you guys say? Sure, why not? Mm -hmm. All right. I have terrible news. This is the Justin version (laughs) because you guys didn't watch one of these. Oh. Yeah. So I watched some movies. You just didn't want to watch those ones too. Okay. Well, you can talk about them here in a second. Uh, I'm going to be real quick on a couple of these. Um, First off, in follow up to the Grit Podcast episode about uh, Giuliani Kopke, I watched a. I guess biography biopic about her sure called miracles still happen from 1974. Huh? Uh, it was not good. Oh, it was quite bad. In fact, it's some of the worst teen acting I've ever seen. That's good. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't like it. It's very fictionalized, very ooh snakes and spiders. And she's like this tough ass woman that's wrestling with alligators in real life. So it's full of shit just to make the, the theater audience be like ooh, snakes and spiders too grody and then she like sucks so ah. uh don't watch miracles still or still happen uh just watch the Werner herzog documentary which is called without wings no that's the episode of grit uh wings of hope wings of hope yeah next up i'm gonna give you guys some uh actors here sure some people involved some principles and uh i want to see if you can guess what movie this is Tom Atkins, Bruce Campbell, Robert Zadar, Richard Roundtree, William Smith, Laureen Landon, and written by Larry Cohen. Suicide Squad. Yep, that's, that's the one. The one. Uh, ah, I don't know. That's one of those. Uh, it's in like a cheap disaster film. Nope. Okay. It's a space film of some kind because nope. I didn't recognize Scott Atkins. Tom Atkins. Tom Atkins. Oh. Scott Atkins. Different guy. Totally not the same guy. Scott uh, Atkins is the handsome one, right? Yeah. That Tom does At- all the mar- martial arts. Tom Atkins is the guy from Halloween 3 that says, thrill me in Night of the Creeps. He's awesome. Mm-hmm. Mustache. Oh, yeah. Okay. Silver haired guy. Wait, I want another guess then. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Night of the Creeps. No. Not Night of the Creeps. <laughs> oh, okay. Just uh, checking. This movie is fucking awesome. It's Maniac Cop. Oh, yeah. I have been wanting to see Maniac Cop for a long ass time. I don't know what kept me from getting to it. Uh, it's on Hulu and Shudder. I should say Shudder.tv, I believe, uh, You can, which I watched through Amazon Prime. It is fucking incredible. Yeah, I've seen Maniac Cop. I thought we were doing it streaming because we were just going to go right to an episode on it. Uh, yeah, but it's been three years now that oh. we haven't done it. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I want to watch this movie. I'm going to watch it. I fucking loved it. Yeah, see, I've already seen it, so I, I could hold off. Yeah, you missed out, Jackie, on this one. Uh, it was fucking great. Robert Sadar plays this guy that comes back to death. He's an ex-cop that just wants to kill everybody now, and like nobody can stop him, and Tom, At- Tom Atkins is like, hold it right there, Buster. I'm going to shoot you 75 times in this movie, and nothing's going to happen. And then Bruce Campbell's just this other cop that gets falsely accused of Robert Sadar's murders. And so he has to, like, clear his name with the help of Laureen Landon. Fucking fantastic. Silly business from the get-go. Never stops. Very Bruce Campbell-y. There's even a Sam Raimi cameo yeah. as a news reporter. Mm. Fucking loved it. Highly recommend Maniac Cop. Watch it right now. Last but not least, from me, on Amazon Prime, Cynthia Rothrock and Godfrey Ho from a 2000 film called Manhattan Chase. Is that the one where she's naked on the front doing the... Yes. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, Shit's terrible. It's not good. <laughs> not uh, even for Godfrey. You you expect it to be uh, completely incoherent when Godfrey Hill is involved because he's going to mix two movies. Yeah. But this one is a little bit like a couple of decks with cards that are different sizes tried to shuffle together. It's it's painfully not interesting. Yeah. there There's like a plot line about like this tough cap that's trying to put his family back together. And that seriously takes like three quarters of the movie, just Mm. dialogue about this guy and his family. And meanwhile, Cynthia Rothrock's barely in it. Now when she's in it, she's fucking great, Mm. but uh, she's not in it enough. No. Is this one of her earlier films? No, 2000. I don't know how long she's been acting. Yeah. This is well into her. This is late in her career. Yes. This is after the fall. Yeah. Uh, I will say that this does have a scooter chase. (laughs) Now that could be dangerous. Uh, if a, a scooter, like one of those handheld motorized child scooters, uh, 
and Cynthia Rothrock is on a skateboard chasing mm. through the park. It's pretty hilarious. But that's the only thing that that's happens. That's not in this enough. Movie. It's not enough. Stay away from Manhattan. Yeah. Mm. Sam, what did you bring? I'll only burn the one. Okay. Uh, phenomena. From Mario Argento. On what? Jennifer uh, Connelly on um, Amazon Prime. Okay. All right. So I think it's Jennifer Connelly's first movie. It's uh-huh. one of Dario Argento's best. Okay. Huh. I watched it because I watched Suspiria before that so that I could also watch The Neon Demon. If you guys watch that, we'll talk about that next streaming do's yeah. and don'ts. Um, I would you have recommend... to watch all those other shows before you watch Neon well, Demon. I just wanted no, to watch no, no, Suspiria no. again because You've I hadn't seen, seen Suspiria, it. You've seen Suspiria, Jackie. I hadn't seen Suspiria since it was on. It was a bad VHS copy, yeah. and it's a different fucking movie. If you have, sure. if you've only seen it on VHS, watch Suspiria again. It's not streaming anywhere though, so you'll have to find someone that has it. Uh, whereas Phenomenon is streaming, and it is you know one of his better movies. I don't huh. know if it's as good as Inferno, but I definitely give it a do. What's it about? Well, it's called Creepers. It's like bugs. It's a horror movie. It's okay. Argento. Yeah, well, yeah, right. But it's um, more of a supernatural than slasher versus his other films. Is this the same one that did the vampire one yes, with, with his daughter, his daughter right. getting all naked? Right. Yep. yep. Yeah. And many, many bad Italian horror movies. Some uh, good ones, though. Some good ones. Suspiria, though, is more supernatural than slasher at the same time. Kind of, but it has a supernatural element, but it's still straight up like... First uh, death is a lady getting carved up with a nine-inch knife. She gets stabbed about four times. Right. Uh, the second death is like the wires, and she gets stabbed, and uh-huh. she comes back to life. Right. But yeah, there's a supernatural element, but it's still pretty knifey. Whereas Phenomenon is not nearly as knifey. Okay. What year is this? Uh, I think eighty-nine. Okay. Jay J- Conley, huh? It had yeah. to be before 89. If yeah. it was, she was, so it had to be like 85, 86. Yeah, somewhere in there. Because it's right before Labyrinth. Let me ask you. Sure. She get him out. I think she's 16. Yeah, so oh, no. yeah, she can't get him out. No, she doesn't get him out. Yeah. You know what? She doesn't like, she's sort of like, she, you know, she's like that girl next door or whatever mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. until she turns like 35, 40, and then it's like, whoa, you're super hot. Yeah. Uh, Weird one that aged like wine or something like that. I wonder what she's up to. We haven't seen her since uh, Noah. I think oh, she just did a movie. No, yeah. it's been quite a kind of quiet from the Gen Con side of things. J Con, I don't know. Somebody has a yeah. Name you're not. You think Chico. You're, Chico. No, no, you do no. Uh, thick eyebrow booby lady. Yeah, how's that? I don't think I've ever seen her boobs. They're huge. Yeah, they're really because they're in a lot of things. Yeah. Oh, really? She yeah. is very chesty. Yeah, once she turned 30, she started getting them out all over the like place. Like her and Selma Hayek could really do some damage I to thought... the seismic tectonic plates. Yeah, I thought that she actually got them reduced. She might have. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen Selma Hayek's boobs, and I remember the first time I saw those babies, uh, I was abs- What? She's got big boobs. Yeah. American Pastoral, written, directed, and starring by Ewan McGregor. Yeah. She's hmm. the uh, other... Sounds like a VOD movie. It's got Dakota Fanning. No, it looks like it's getting a... It's got... Well, it's Lionsgate, so... Yeah. 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 All right. Well, there's your Jennifer Conley update. Update. <laughs> She's been working. She's been working. Not in 2015, but she had uh, four titles in 14, so... Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, there's your streaming do's and don'ts. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, this week, since it's my pick for mm-hmm. Tango and Cash, uh, brought a wild card in. It's the great superpower debate, which we haven't done in quite some time. This Bam's one, superpower is farts. Yes, he's quite... He laid over here and started farting. He he purposely walked away from the fireplace to sit next to you and blow ass on you. He did. The dog. Stinks. Yeah, that dog stinks. Um, This one we should all be very familiar with. You have all of the powers of a Vulcan in today's world. Yes. So logic and you're pretty strong. Nerve pinch. Mind melt. That's not really a power. That's a skill. You just got to find out where to pinch him. Uh, I think think that there's like uh, energy passage to all of the mind melts. You can't just stick your hand on some guy's face and connect to his brain. They have energy. Now, do you have to... To have the logic behind yes. you. So I couldn't just be me with these powers. 
you are Jackie the Vulcan. Yeah, see, I think the, the mind meld, because of episodes of Star Trek Enterprise, you learn that the mind meld and all of that stuff, those are skills that are learned. Yes, but you that, can't. humans cannot do them. No. And also, using a mind meld, you can transfer your essence uh, into another being and then being reincarnated later. Like your sperm? That's weird. It's kind of Vulcan Spock sperm. Yeah. That's, that's how Spock is reborn in Search for Spock. Yeah, He kinda. transfers it to McCoy. Well, because I can't be my usual shitty self, it's because I'd just... have to be logical, I wouldn't... Nope. I, I'm going to say this is a bad power. All right. Because I wouldn't be able to go around, you know, knocking people out and mind-melting people just uh, for fun. Yeah. So because couldn't... it's not logical. Vulcans do not have fun. Yeah, so you, you're saying... It's a bad superpower because you can't use it to be a dick. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Your Vulcanness wouldn't let you. I, it just wouldn't be any fun. It would be like, oh, yeah, I'm just really super stick in the muddish now. With super strength and essentially superpowers. That Yes, some of them you have to learn, but they are superpowers. Sure. Okay. Uh, I guess I'd be killer in the sack if I had super strength. And have you seen them have sex? They just rub their fingers together. Yeah, and they can only sense. do it once every seven years. Yeah. So. Oh, see, this is just getting worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can only bone once every seven years. Well, you, technically, you can do it whenever you, you can, want. You just don't want to. Yeah. You're like, okay, let's get. But this then, when you with. want to, oh boy, do you want to? Yeah. Like you go fucking ape shit. Like, like I mean, like ape shit. Yeah. Like a shit from an ape. That's crazy. You have that's to what you do. Place all your furniture every seven years. You run out the door. You just suddenly are like, "Holy shit, I'm Orion!" Then you run out the door in the perfect shape of your body, like a cartoon. Yeah. You just punch holes through walls because you're so horny looking for ladies or men or whoever or the chair that S- looks yeah, good. Stick it in a bag of rice. Yep. <laughs> yeah, this does not seem awesome. It keeps getting worse by the minute. Sam, can you uh, think about being a Vulcan? Would be awesome. Uh, you know, no one would make sense to you because they'll be earthlings. Would you have to live on earth too? Yes. It's 2017. You live in earth. You're the Vulcan. So you're just surrounded by people who don't make sense to you. Correct. You live in San Francisco because that's where the Star Trek base is. Not necessarily. You're not, um, you're not, I didn't say you're a Vulcan and a member of Starfleet. You're just Sam the Vulcan. Sam the Vulcan. Well, you're probably going to get deported as soon as so-and-so takes office. Because we have spaceships. You're no, it's not the Star Trek universe, Jackie. Well, you're he just would, a Vulcan. He would be stupid. and He'd be like, you're definitely Canadian. Yeah. All right. He could think you're from a different country. Sure. But I don't know about Canada. You probably think like Norway or something. Yeah. I guess from Norway. Get him out of here. Got pointy eyebrows and pointy ears, too. Yeah. yeah. Pointy, North well, Pole. <laughs> he'd be like, you're from you're an elf from the North Pole. <laughs> you need to go back up north. Do you know Santa? <laughs> I think I, you wear a hat or whatever. Yeah. You get the dumb and dumber haircut. You're yeah, fine you with the, your thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but it's the other part that seems to make all of being strong and would be cool. Yeah. Because the mind melding thing is really very useful in only certain situations. Correct. Correct. Uh, the neck pinch uh, nefarious really is yeah. all it's good yeah. for. I get, you know what you would be? Mm-hmm. Sam Vulcan super cop that no one liked. Or. Justin Vulcan, one of the best bouncers at a bar ever. Uh, you rather you'd be like the best detective ever because you're logical. Yeah, but you don't have to beat people up very often when you're a detective. You just take no. pictures of ladies cheating on their husbands, and that's and, you, and no one likes you, and no one likes you, and you nobody likes bouncers either. Really, get to toss people. You wouldn't want to be a bouncer if you're a Vulcan. It's illogical. Why? Because you could be a detective instead and make more money. No, you, no, you be... can't, dude. Detectives make none money, Sam. In books and movies, detectives make lots of money. No, they don't. Housewives cheating on their husbands don't pay very much money. I know how much bouncers you make, and it's less than detectives. Yeah, I don't know about that. It's hourly. It's not good it's money. It's not either good way. money either, either way. way. Yeah. No, they'd probably be a, you'd be a CPA. That's what you'd end up uh, doing. An accountant. Yeah. You'd be. With superpowers. With, uh, you'd, you'd never <laughs> use them. And your wife would be like, I think the thrill is gone. You're like, the thrill was never here. I'm going to go crunch numbers some more. Yes. Yeah, it'd be like three. Two days. I'm giving it a three. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> giving it a two. This sucks. There's not a lot of allure to being a Vulcan. No. Unless you're surrounded by other Vulcans, then it's still like Vulcan dinner parties? No thanks. <laughs> 
Man, I thought that was going to be a hot one. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Well, a two and a three make a 2.5 on average. That is a low superpower. So, Sam, why don't you tell us about Tango and Cash? Tango and Cash was made in 1989. It is now a grocery store in Santa Monica, California. Tango and Cash? It is not. I thought it was one of those places where you go for payday loans. All a dollar? Boo. No. Boo. Nice mom joke. Yeah. Oh, come on. You I've don't got even my mom have to sign on over your car. You just do a dance and they give you the money. Yeah. <laughs> With your wiener hanging out. Oh, come on. <laughs> That's the Speaking thing. of, who is the man who gets into Hollywood, all of the Hollywood hangdown competitions? Kurt Russell. That's who. Yeah. And this he week, does. he will be comparing his star penis, I mean power, to that of one Sylvester Stallone. Is there going to be a big fight between him and Sylvester Stallone? I mean, you've seen this movie. Well, uh, no, I mean, like I, it was with the Kevin Costner one that we watched. Actually, it. no. Apparently, the two got along just fine, as there was probably no illusions that Stallone was, in fact, the big boss on the picture. And uh, he would kill Kurt Russell. That's what we should yeah. have done. Who would win in a knife fight? No more knife fight. <laughs> <laughs> the caveats of Stallone pictures of the time are all there. Firing the DP before shooting starts. Starting to rewrite the script after shooting starts. And having more than one person rewrite the script without communicating with one another. Firing the director after the project has gone over budget by also almost double. Also happened in this film. I guess Kurt saw things were going well enough on their own, so he didn't bother making any more interference. He figured that Stallone had this project under control. I'm just going to stand over here. You're like, yeah, I, I know how to screw up a picture, but <laughs> this guy's like fucking poetry in motion. I just get to watch. He's the Van Gogh think, of fucking up film. I think that Kurt Russell would use what he learned on this film to make uh, 3,000 Miles to Graceland. Could be, Could be yeah. The project that it was. Uh-huh. Well, you know, we all learn from our mistakes. Or, yeah. Well, Stallone would later praise him for being a real pro, despite Russell being the fallback option. To Patrick Swayze, who ditched the project for Roadhouse. Hmm. That was a good yeah. call, Patrick Swayze. Was it? Uh, I, I if, love Roadhouse. <sighs> I love this movie. I wonder if there could have ever have been a Tango, Reynolds, and Cash. Like Swayze's tough cop named Reynolds. And like for the sequel, that would have been awesome. And then he had like a Reynolds rap thing. Yeah, sure. But then his partner is... Uh, the where's the beef guy, Sam Elliott. <laughs> Where, where's the beef, Wendy's? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, what beef? It's what's for dinner. Yeah, it's beef. It's what's for dinner. Yeah, where's the beef? Is that little old lady? <laughs> yeah, but Sam Elliott would be his partner because you know Reynolds just couldn't be a renegade one man cop. He has to have a partner too, and he would get shot like uh, Dirty Harry's partners do at the very beginning of the movie because I fucking hate Sam Elliott. Proceed, Sam. Elliot. Elliot. <laughs> oh. Well, by the time the dust would settle on this set, there would have been four directors, including Stallone. Five, if you Jesus. count that they brought in Stuart Baird, who is known for directing pictures in post-production and is Hollywood's most renowned editing doctor. He's like a, a relief pitcher. He comes in at the ninth inning and just, you know. No, it's like in the tenth inning, he re-edits it. He re-edits the footage to make, make it look like he won the game. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What an effort. <laughs> yeah, so Stuart Baird comes in, re-edits the film, and what's left is enough deleted scenes to make a whole other movie. Jesus. There there's remains, two hours of deleted scenes? I think there's only about an hour and ten minutes. But That's damn near. a lot of deleted scenes. Yeah. What remains is comedy gold. The largest feud during production was between Stallone, who wanted it to be a very dark and brooding crime film, and producer John Peters, who wanted it to be a campy spoof of the popular buddy cop subgenre. Who will remember from our Barbara Streisand bullshit and also Supergirl, I believe, John Peters uh, produced? Yes, all of the Superman post-Saul kind Peters. and as well as He was the one that almost got the Kevin Smith, uh, Nick Cage Superman made. Yes. He's done some okay movies. I don't know. It, he's done some okay. He's done some bad ones, mm-hmm. but and he's been in. <laughs> there's some behind the scenes stuff that John Peters seems like a total douche. Yeah. Wait, Kevin Smith, the fat guy with the beard, yes. yes, was going to direct the Nick Cage Superman movie that never happened. Oh, yeah. I thought he was going to be Superman. <laughs> I'm like, that is not a good fit. Hmm. But Nick Cage, yeah, <laughs> I can see it. All right, put a wig on him. Huh. 
Well, when you brought the pair of ideas together and let Baird stir that pot together independently, you get two things, Tango and Cash. Mm-hmm. The cast is almost as big as the repair bill on this thing, because they went $20 million over budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit. The whole thing cost 55 so they went almost double the budget. Jesus. I expect to have some good costumes. <sighs> You've seen this movie. You've seen the movie. <laughs> I'm sure I will remember it's it when we watch it. a cop movie with nut sacks. There's no costumes. Supercars. Why do I think this is a Western? I don't know. <laughs> I totally, I don't think I'm thinking of the right movie at all. Yeah, okay. So it it's not even been that long since we watched it. Yeah, it's only it been like, like two a, years. Two years. My brain is, like I said, it's pretty, it's it's pretty cold. cold. It's very cold. It's very cold. Uh, and if it was very cold, you know you'd want to have in a picture Terry Hatcher. Oh, Turn it on the high beams. Not, no, 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 thanks. I, All right, oh, fine. Never, not a chance. Well, I'm going man. back to the cast. Y'all She's forgot. on my. If I had one, my untime machine hit list. I would take her off <laughs> Hollywood her because, her like, from dude, existence. She's not it at all. <laughs> well, uh, the she's film. a poor man's Jennifer Conley, actually. Okay, I know. Uh, okay, that's an insult to the fine woman in Jennifer Conley. Jerry, Jackie, do you like uh, Terry Hatcher? I don't really care about her. Yeah. All right. It's not that I dislike her. It's not even that I like her. I just, she's one of those people that I'm like, oh, yeah, she exists. She exists. Hey. Well, also, other people that exist in this film Brian James, Jack mm-hmm. Palance, mm-hmm. Jeffrey Lewis, mm-hmm. James Hong, mm-hmm. Robert Zadar, mm-hmm. Michael Jeter, Clint Howard, and many more. Oh, my. Awesome. Isn't James Hong the one that grabs ladies? Yes. yes. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's keep an eye out for best and worst hair first off. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah. 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 Because there's a lot of people that are very interested in how their hair look in this film. (laughs) Uh, Then then we'll go with favorite line and least possible piece of the film, or least probable, like the most impossible event, basically. I can dig it. Those are all Uh, good ones. It should also be noted, a little postscript. When I was 10... I thought this was the best movie that had ever been made. Ever. Ever. Like, this is a fine motion picture. I, when <laughs> when I saw this the first time on home video, I was like, eat your heart out, Orson Welles. You, <laughs> I don't even know who you are, you son of a bitch. But you can suck it. Tango and Cash has brought the people what they want. <laughs> it's going to bring peace in the Middle East. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, why isn't every movie Tango you and Cash? You said it all, Tango and Cash. Yeah. I think oh one of the God. things that I liked so much, like years later, I had sort of an unnatural fascination with True Lies. And I think it's because True Lies has the same sort of feel as Tango and yeah. Cash. <laughs> Just much better written. Oh, yeah. No, it's like a good tango in cash, yeah. basically. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I Oh, shit. I never even looked it up. Um, hold on. You know what? Everybody else came to this podcast prepared. Did and for they? once, sort you of. were not. Hmm. I'm just going to say it. I think this is the first time you have not been prepared, and I'm going to gloat. I think I looked it up the other day, and I think Nothing. it is not. It's available in every pawn shop in America. It's really not, because they haven't made a press of this in a while. Oh, that's well, where you got yours. Yeah, it's full screen. Oh. <laughs> Sam immediately has judged you. Well, it's available to rent on just about every streaming thing you can imagine for $2.99. Uh, so there you go. Watch the film this weekend. Enjoy it. Come back to us on Monday and get to the chopper. Fans of Stinker Madness, iTunes thinks you don't like us. What? How is that possible? Well, it's because you haven't given us a review yet. Go to Stinker Madness on iTunes and take just a couple seconds to rate and review us there. While you're at it, hit up Stitcher.com as well. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter at forward slash Stinker Madness and email us at talk at We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening and get to the chopper.